So today we're going to be solving a problem that I didn't know I had with a program that I didn't know I needed. So we're going to be adding drag and drop support to and more importantly from my terminal. So we're going to be doing this with a program called Dragon. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So you might be wondering what is the point of this program and you might be right to think that there's not really a point but let me pose a question to you. So let's say you live entirely within a terminal file manager, you don't even have a GUI file manager installed or let's just say you primarily use a terminal file manager and you only have the GUI one there for times where you really need it. So for example one of those times is with Discord or really just any web app. So when you want to send an image on a program like that, you generally have to go through some sort of GUI interface to actually select the image. So what if you didn't have to do it that way though, and you could just drag something in directly from your terminal file manager? Like for example, let's let's just have a look at an example. So I've got Discord open right here. So typically, if you want to send a file on Discord, you would either go through the image selector or the, the file selector on Discord. So this brings up a, a GUI file selector or you could do it through something like PCMan FM, Space FM, pretty much any GUI file manager. So if I wanted to send this file right here, what I would do is I would just drag that in. So I don't want to do that though, because a lot of the time I live in a terminal file manager, so I use LF most of the time. So instead of doing it like that, what if we could actually do it through this? So let's say we want to just send just a random file in here. I know there's a highlight.css in here. So we could use a program called Dragon to actually do this. So I've got that bound to DR. So this brings up a little dragon prompt and then I can drag in from here and there we go. Now I can send it from here. So before we get into looking at how this program works, let's just look at how to install it. So if you come over to the GitHub page, there's not really much information about dragon on here. It tells you basically what the program does. It is a GTK3 app. So if you happen to run Qt apps most of the time, I guess you're gonna have to live with it or I guess try to find a Qt version of this. I don't think there's a Qt version of Dragon exactly, but I imagine there's probably some very simple source and sync written for Qt. And if there's not, then I guess just live with it and run the GTK app. It's just a very small program. So if you want to install it on most distros, I think you're going to have to install it from source. But if you're on Arch, there is an AUR package for it. Now, there's another program called Dragon in the extra repo. So on Arch, it's actually got a different name. On Arch, it's actually called Dragon, Dragon, Drop. So I'll just show you how to install that. So if you've got something like yay installed, then you can go yay dash s. So that'll take a second to do that. And there we go, I've already got it installed, so I'm not even gonna bother with this, but obviously if you don't, then you can go through that process to do it. So it's available in the AUR, not in the main repo. So if you don't use yay, then use whatever method it is you use to actually install AUR packages. I've talked about it plenty of times on the channel, so I'm not gonna go into that today. So let's just have a look at the help page for Dragon and see what we can do with it. So obviously you can use it to actually drag from a place, but you can actually use it to drag into as well, which is also another interesting use for it. So it's got a help page. So it doesn't do a ton of stuff, but it does do a couple of things that are pretty useful. So the first one that you might care about is actually closing after you've done a single drop. So before I wasn't closing after a single one because let's say I was to open up a bunch of files instead. So let's say I want to drag all of these folders somewhere. So I could go DR and then that brings them all up. So if I then had it sort of quit after one drop, I wouldn't be able to drag each individual one of these. So for when I'm actually sending files to a place, I don't close it after one drop. I just close it the way that you'd normally close programs. So on my system, that is Super Shift Q. I've got the like headers for Windows disabled, but I assume that if you don't, there would also be a header at the top. So you could close it like that. I don't know though. So obviously if you are on a system that uses those, like you're just on GNOME or something like that, I assume there would be like an X to close it as well. I don't know. I don't use it though. So we can just close out of that and that's all gone now. So you can actually reverse this process. You don't have to use it as a source. You can actually use it as a target. So if we run dragon with the dash T option, so obviously I'm on arch, so dragon dash dragon drop. I should probably put that in a script so it's a bit shorter to run, but we'll just go with it for now. And as we can see in here, you might not be able to see it really clearly, but it says drag something here. So we can actually drag an image into this or drag literally anything. So let's just open up something like 
PC Man FM, or actually this is Space FM now. But let's just drag a file in here, so say this file that we used before. So as we can see, it now says it's a file, and then it gives us the actual path to the file that's there. So the reason it says it's a file is just so it can distinguish between the different things that you can actually pass in. So let's test that with something else that we can pass in, like this image right here. So if we pass in an image on my web browser, so pass that in there, and as we can see, that'll actually give us a link directly to that image. So if we quit out of this program now, then what it would do is actually send those into wherever you want to send them to. So say you wanted to pipe those into some other program to parse them or you wanted to store them in a variable, then you could do it like that. But what can we actually do with these links? Because obviously getting the links, that's cool and all, but it's not really too useful. Being able to drag from something, that's useful. But what about dragging into it? Now, I've actually got another script that I haven't shown you yet to actually download a file if I drag it into that prompt or drag it into that window, I guess. So let's just have a look at that one. So I'll just deselect those just in case it is gonna try to do anything weird. But if we press DL, then this will give us another window here. So this will bring up another drag something here window. And let's drag something in. So this Nekopara image, let's just name it something like Nekopara. And that just runs curl. And what's that gonna do? So let's just have a look at that image now. Now I've actually downloaded it. So that I think is a really cool use for this. So you can just drag something into your terminal and then actually download it. So I don't just have this bound in LF. So I've got it in a script called uh, DL file. That brings up the same prompt that we just saw before. So let's try this again. We can just name this necopara1.jpg. That runs curl and now we can actually bring that up. So sxiv, I've got the dot, there we go. And as we can see, that now brings up the image. It's behind my terminal, but it brings up the image. So you don't just have to use this for images, you could use this for anything that you could actually drag from a, another place into this window. So if you wanted to drag a file in, you wanted to drag a website, you want to drag literally anything, the most common place you're going to use this is from your web browser, but it doesn't also have to be from that. If you have some program where you can drag an image in, so say a lot of Electron apps are written like that because they are built in JavaScript, so they pretty much integrate pretty well into a web browser. So if you want to drag something from Discord into it, then you could do that or just various other uses for that. So I typically just use this to download images, but you could obviously just use it for anything you want. So let's just actually have a look at what this script does or let's have a look at how the script works, I guess. So in a DL file, DL file, if I can spell properly, this is a really simple script. So basically what we're doing, we are opening up that drag and drop window and we're opening up with the dash T and the dash X option. So dash T will make it a target and dash X will make it disappear after one thing's been dropped into it. Typically, I'm not gonna wanna keep it open after downloading one thing. Most of the time, I'm gonna be on a page that just has one thing that I want. So closing after that one is probably gonna be fine. I'll move the webcam over just a bit. And then we're going to name the image and basically, this is just doing a little check to make sure that if the file exists, we're not actually overriding a file without saying, yes, I want to override the file. And then basically all we're doing once we've got the name set up is we are using curl with the dash L option. So dash O, let's just have a look at what that does. Man curl. Okay, so dash O will actually write the output to a file instead of to standard out. So by default, curl will try to actually output everything to standard out, but you can actually give it a file to download to instead. So I'm downloading to say necopara.jpg or file.txt, whatever you want to call the file. And then I'm just passing the URL for the thing I want to download and then just exiting if it fails. And that's pretty much all that does. It's nothing too special. If you want to have a better look at it, it is available on my GitHub, but it's, it's a very simple script. There's really nothing too complicated with what I'm doing here. So the other script that I used, the one where I was actually using LF as the source, is actually even less complicated, but I guess I can show you how that works just so I can show you how to actually bind this within LF as well. So let's just bring up that, so LFRC. Okay, so obviously if you're using a different terminal file manager, you're gonna to have to bind it differently. This is just how you do it with LF though. So let's just go down to Dragon and basically what we're doing is we are creating two commands. So I'm creating a command for DL file and all I'm doing for that one is just running the DL file program. The reason I'm doing it like this instead of running it directly, you can actually do a mapping like this. So if we go down here, the other way you can do a mapping is directly like this. So you can run a script directly by doing that. So the reason I'm not doing it like this is because this will actually temporarily close the LF window. Whereas if I do it, the method that I'm currently doing, it'll just bring up a prompt down the bottom that'll show me everything that's happening. 
You can do it either way, obviously, but I prefer it this method. So let's just go back to that. I don't know why I went to the top, but anyway. Now with dragon, the, what I'm doing here is I'm running dragon, drag and drop. So I'm not even running any custom stuff with it. And then I'm running it with the dash A option. So that'll make it so that I can actually drag everything from it. And then I'm just using the special LF binding for every single selected file. Now, one thing you do have to keep in mind when you are doing this is that if the files have spaces in them, then they're going to be treated as separate files unless you actually escape the spaces. So make sure you just keep that in mind. I would recommend just not having spaces in your file names. I've had them for a while, especially when it comes to my screenshots folder, just because the screenshot names are based off of the name of the file and a lot of those files have spaces in them. So because of that, I've had a bunch of spaces and it's made it so it didn't work properly. But if you clear out the spaces, then you can use this perfectly fine. Or if you want to just escape all the spaces, then that's also an option for you as well. But that'll just require a bit of extra handling. So the other method I've got this set up with is actually downloading directly just when I'm on my desktop. So I can press super S and this will bring up the same prompt. So if I want to download this file again, obviously I'm going to have to put it on the same desktop. I can fix that up by making this a window that will follow me around everywhere, but I just haven't set that up. That's just a binding I can do within BSPWM. So let's try to download this image again. It just brings me up with a prompt. Let's just call it, I don't even know what number we're up to at this point. So that'll download and then let's just go SX IV then necopara3.jpg and that just downloads the image like that. So the reason I've got it set up like that is occasionally I'm just not going to have a terminal open and I just easily want to download a file without having to go through, oh, I want to right click on this. I want to go save image. I want to then find where I want to put it. This will just put it in my home directory. So that's not perfect. I might come up with some way to deal with that. Like maybe based on the file extension, that'll determine where I put it. But for now, if I download it through this method, it'll just save it directly to my home directory, which isn't perfect, but it works temporarily. So I reckon that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in this video. So if you like this program, be sure to download it, try it out, try out my scripts with it, and hopefully this will reduce your need to actually use a GUI file manager because you can even use this to drag images into GIMP or drag video files into Caden Live so you can just avoid using the GUI file manager in those programs as well. So you can just rely on a single file manager and not have to deal with everything else. So this almost eliminates my need for a GUI file manager. The other thing I want to do is just get USB auto mounting. I know it's very easy to do, but I just had it set up through Thunar. So I've just got Thunar installed and that just handles it automatically for me. So I will get that done. And then I probably won't even need a GUI file manager at that point because I, after that, I think I've then pretty much handled everything that they were doing for me. So yeah, after that point, I might just live entirely with an LF or whatever terminal file manager I happen to be using at that point. So until then, I think that's pretty much everything for me. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you wanna see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram. So go check that out if you wanna chat with me or get video updates. I've also got my support links down below, so my Patreon and my other donate links. So feel free to use any of those if you do want to support the channel. But obviously, if you don't want to, then you don't have to, but it is really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.